Now, you spent a lot of your life in the House of Representatives, contract for America and so forth. Um, uh, you duped it out with Bill Clinton. You were very conscious of uh, fiscal responsibility and so forth. Now, I understand emergencies. I understand we have fellow citizens who are hurting, whether they're business owners or executives or whether they're employees or whomever they are, and that in a time like this, they need help, particularly when the government, mostly governors, are shutting down businesses through no fault of their own as a result of this virus. But I have to tell you, I have millions of people who, watch, who listen to my radio show and are on my social sites. And for two hours uh, last week, I just took calls, which I almost never do, in a three-hour program. And to a person except for one, the people were calling, and they were mostly blue-collar. They were cops. They were nurses, the wife of a butcher, a FedEx driver, and so forth. They are furious with this bill because they said, yes, let's help our fellow citizens. But $2.2 trillion, and people are even bragging that maybe it's $6 trillion. Americans are commonsensical people. What do you think about this? Well, and first of all, <clears throat> we probably won't agree on part of this. I think this is like being in a war. I think it was psychologically very important to get that bill passed and get it passed with 96 to 0. Helps the momentum. I hope that uh, we're going to see the continued movement of this kind of legislation. But <clears throat> I also think because there are more bills coming. And I think every person who uh, is upset about this bill should call their congressman call their senators and start right now to build a, a fire, if you will, against any more of the pork. I mean, the thing that what happens is you take something that we really need to do, let's say a trillion, a trillion two, then you suddenly have somebody come rushing in with the Kennedy Center or somebody else comes rushing in with something else they want. And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I tell people that, the, that it's the pigs in the bill, the pork in the bill that pulls the train and ultimately gets it done. I do think we had to pass a pretty big bill. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think this is exactly like World War II. We are in a global problem caused by the Chinese. You're exactly right. I did a newsletter last week in which I took day by day what the Chinese had done that made this much, much worse. If the Chinese had been honest, and if the Chinese had intervened at the beginning, uh, I think that 95% of this would have disappeared. And that wasn't just my judgment. There was a British university that looked at it and said what the Chinese did dramatically expanded the problem. Well, then China needs to pay a price for it, doesn't it, Mr. Speaker? In other words, we can't do business as usual with China. You know, uh, Tom Cotton, senator from Arkansas, has a bill out there that our pharmaceutical companies need to uh, relocate into the United States, or at least with allies. China threatened to cut off our drugs, uh, of which... Right. Uh, Many of them, 80, up to 80 percent of them, rely in part directly or indirectly on China. And then they blame the United States military. They have this huge propaganda campaign, which, by the way, uh, many in our media are very receptive to, I might add. And uh, I do not think China, if you're saying this is the same as World War II, well, then let's be honest, then they were the enemy. And then uh, if that's the case, then China cannot get away with this. What, what sort of things should we be doing? Well, I mean, I think, first of all, we ought to, we ought to have, if there's going to be a third, another bill, I want that bill to include a tax provision that you can take a complete credit if you move the equipment back to the U.S. You can take a deduction if you move it to India or some other country. But that we ought to have as a stated goal, not just pharmaceuticals, not just medical devices, nothing which really matters to us in terms of our national security or our health should be manufactured in China. Now, under President Trump, we've gotten much tougher very fast. We need to continue down that road, make it methodical, uh, make sure we think through a strategy that will shrink the Chinese, that will punish them every time they steal intellectual property, uh, and that will not allow them to go around the world uh, doing the kind of things they're doing. And I think we, Secretary Pompeo has been exactly right. He's launched a campaign worldwide with our embassies to communicate this disease came from China. This is China's fault. All of us are suffering because the dictatorship in China allowed this to happen.